Hello and welcome to Raw Impressions episode number 76. Match game 76. Isn't that emotional? On this episode, the very first Raw Impressions flashback from January 2023. Also, Adele reads poems. Please enjoy. Thank you for listening. When I realized it was the 76th episode, I did have almost a uh, compulsion, an impulse to make it like a bicentennial. Because <laughs> ah, 76 in yeah. 1976 was a huge deal. Mm. People painted fire hydrants into like Revolutionary War figures or Uncle Sam. Mm. People were really, it was a very patriotic time. And uh, Hendrix and I have been watching Match Game 76 too. Oh, how's so, that? It's fucking amazing. Is Get it? Ready yeah. To match the star. What's it on YouTube or? Yeah, it's YouTube. There's a YouTube channel that has these incredibly well uh, transferred, I would say, from uh-huh. analog to digital um, episodes that run in order. Wow. Like, you go like that's match so game cool. 76, and bam, there's the entire fucking year of episodes, all in cri- the crisp, crispest quality they can be. That's so cool. Like, whoever did that, thanks. I know. Right? Like, it's that, that kind of thing. Like, thank you. You did the work. <laughs> Deep gratitude. <laughs> so much so much joy. Yeah, well, the gift you're giving people. Wow. And the gift they're giving me. And now Hendrix loves it, too. There you go. But New I, generation. I, I was on the match game. Not intending to make... I, I, <laughs> I feel there's a match game episode of Raw Impressions in me. Oh. Or perhaps a, a mini music Monday. I'd like to watch a match game with you one of these days, one of these afternoons when the kids are at school. They're only, you know, they're without commercials, they're only 21 minutes yeah. long or so. Sure. And they are incredible time capsules. Are there commercials cut from them? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Without, I mean, it's. It's kind of, I, I hate commercials typically, but. It sort of is a shame because I would love to see almost the commercials from the seventies. Well, you can see those on YouTube too. I know. I like to have the crisp, like boom, 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 boom. You know, because yeah. it really there's a momentum. How there's fun there's, for the fashion and everything. Oh my and god, the looks! You, I oh. I think you'd really, really like it, and I do yeah. want to share it with you. But let's do that. Let's talk okay. about that match game another I'm day. Bu- I'm building a whole epic episode about this show Ooh. where I recreate the music. Okay. It's, it's it's developing. It's in my brain. <laughs> Planting the seed. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's yep. good. Just plant that seed. We're going to slowly water it. No pressure. It'll happen, let's say, in 2024. Just give yourself till the end of 2024 for your wonderful match game episode. Mm. How's that? Okay. Okay. Does that give you enough time? I don't know. Oh, okay. Or no, 2025. Think, <laughs> I don't know. We're not going anywhere, guys. This my podcast I- will be on forever. My <laughs> ideas, my ideas are like they can be like, like a tree. You plant it, and it yeah, takes, could be I mean. like a, a macadamia, a macadamia bush. Have I talked about macadamias with it's you? It's a bush. Oh, some kind of bush. Uh huh. I think it's like a treeish bush. Like a nut bush. Nut bush. <laughs> <laughs> So a nut shrub. Did you know that they have to grow for seventeen years before they start giving nuts? Is that true? Seventeen years. Twelve. Really? Really? I... Raw impressions flashback. Oh. Episode number eight, January two thousand twenty-three. I really would love to see you and Dave Grohl grow off sometime that would just be no you you i thought you said you wanted to be friends with dave Grohl. i never said i wanted to be friends with dave Grohl. <laughs> i mean i'd love to be friends with dave Grohl. who would not i think you did who, i think you did no i think you put that out okay, there last see, year in no, fact but no, that's, um and, no, and then it was dave was no. dave Grohl and eddie vetter hey take it easy oh, oops did i did i reveal take too it much easy <laughs> I mean, someone. I mean, look, can you please make this like, happen? I can't. I can't say no. I Dave don't want to be. I can't say no. I don't want to be friends with David Grohl. Mm-hmm. But I'm just. I, it sounds pathetic <laughs> when a C list C list musician oh, says baby. I want to. I want. I mean, it's. It's. You outed me. Oh. Saying that I wanted <laughs> that I wanted to be friends with Dave Grohl oh, and he did and Eddie Vedder. Oh, <laughs> Flashback. <laughs> yeah, so, so that was you humiliating me. What? I felt. 
Did um, you really feel humiliated? I did feel You could have just bit. edited the whole thing and said, we're not putting that hey, out there. No. You allowed that to this go This is raw impressions. I, I let it out raw. I did feel embarrassed. When well, you- maybe I didn't realize that that was like a secret that that I mean, you know, we share lots of things. Obviously, we're a married couple, if you don't know. <laughs> but uh, I didn't know that that was like a secret desire. And that it wasn't for raw impressions. Sometimes, you know, you don't always know what's what I don't know, because you are so public about so many things that um, that's true. Yeah, I mean, can, in my defense, I, know, I, honestly, I feel like I don't really know the line then with I you outlined because... my masturbating habits very early in my quote unquote career. I did. Yeah. So, why, why would it why, why would it be humiliating me for me for people in, in general to know that you I, desired I wanted, a friendship. I desired the company of mm-hmm. Dave, Dave, Dave Grohl. You did. Uh-huh. And thank you. Can you admit that now that you did? Because I said that it wasn't something I made up. You obviously i want to i just i want to say that i was <laughs> honestly i was i think i was a little embarrassed i think i probably turned even more red than i am already i'm oh, a very red oh, person red. i think it's i was okay. a little redder but no i left it in the episode i wasn't trying to i wasn't trying to like do any damage control i wasn't trying to censor what what you had to say because it was funny you know i had to step back and go it is funny that you're teasing me about well, i but I'd like to say, mm-hmm. guess who? And you, you already know. <laughs> guess who hung out with Dave for probably over two hours just a few days ago? Do we have like an applause thing we could pop in? Oh, oh, you oh know? absolutely. Okay, I'm, great. I, like I've some good fireworks one. blowing. <laughs> no, I've, I've, got, I've got the applause. So a drum solo. I, <laughs> I extracted the applause from, an, uh, from a Black Sabbath live record from the early 70s. So I'm going to put Fantastic. that in there because great. that's exactly the applause this deserves. I spent some quality time, I'll just say, with Dave Grohl. David, yeah. David Grohl. Uh-huh. I did. We, I know. It happened, guys. It happened a year and some months later, a year and a half later or something. And you know, yes. the cool thing is, it was exactly like I thought, and it was why I, I was like, I knew that if I met him, that the conversation could go like it did. Mm-hmm. Like, he's going to tell some really funny stories. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell him some things that I wanted to tell him. Because mm-hmm. you know, just he's a, he's a, there are people, there's a lot of people of his age group of in my, that my peers, I mean, people that have grown up in a very, in a very similar musical environment. Like we kind of started off with hardcore punk rock, mm-hmm. did a lot of U S tours, had a lot of crazy. And we've had, we've shared booking agents. Yeah. We, have, there's a lot of, we have a lot of little things in common along the way. We've worked with some, some of the same people, you know, so I, I like to touch base with people yes. from that, that are, peers of mine in that way yes and the fact that dave is like a full-on a-list rocker you know celebrity was a little intimidating right and did make me feel but i did just want to connect with him on kind of a basic level because it's almost always fun to connect with anybody that is from my same little niche. Yeah. My same little time no, niche. No, I knew, I knew why it would yeah. be fun for you. I mean, maybe, yeah, the listener wouldn't quite understand. I don't know. But if they're a Lou Barlow fan, they'd, I'm sure, understand why. And um, I'm glad to hear that it was nice. It sounds like it was very nice. It was. And, yeah, that's great. It was, um, so Dinosaur was in Atlanta this past weekend for the Shaky Knees Festival. Right. And they played the same day as the Foo Fighters. So Lou got to um, go watch the Foo Fighters and get to meet Dave then. They took us over b- right before the Foo Fighters played, and we chatted with them then. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, it, Dave was like, you know, I'll be around after the show. Mm. And uh, y- usually, um, I'll often split yeah, if I can. But I was like, I have to hang. I'm going to watch it. I mean, the Foo Fighters play for a long time. They mm-hmm. have an incredible relationship with their audience. Yeah. Dave has a, a really good way with his audience. The band yeah. is extremely consistent. And yeah. they've got a new drummer now, Josh Freeze, who's this amazing... 
amazing studio drummer slash drums for everybody guy and he's great yeah and murph and jay were very interested in seeing josh freeze play with the foo fighters yeah but uh yeah jay and i hung out through the show and sure enough there was dave ready to hang after the show mm. and we and we did we all good there was we had a nice little circle of people and we all just swapped stories and dave has some really fucking good stories yeah you know i um bad on me when i saw his his autobiography and it was called storyteller mm -hmm. i was like Oof, that's a little bit that's a big title <laughs> that's a lot that's a lot to chew S like storyteller i mean like mm. come on he's my age <laughs> storyteller I mean, this, this is like it's like wizened you know mm -hmm. it's a big it's a mm -hmm. portentous title Mm -hmm. Possibly pretentious, but you know what? Mm, he is can, a storyteller. The guy can tell a story. There you go. And he tells them well. And he knows his audiences too. Yeah. So it was like we were having like a little, Aww. it was great. And he likes to gossip, you know, like let's, let's do some rock gossip. That's good, fun. Good stuff. You always like that too. Everybody does. Yeah. You know, makes it more fun. It does. <laughs> you know, him telling stories of like watching REO Speedwagon rehearse. Amazing. Him telling stories of trying to sing on stage with Guns N' Roses, who all perform with in-ear monitors, mm -hmm. meaning there's no way to hear the music when you're on stage with Guns N' Roses. So him, does, does the Foo Fighters have in-ear monitors? They probably do, but there's sound coming off the stage. Uh-huh. Um, so they probably use a combination. I didn't look into it. That, you know the other great thing about talking to Dave Grohl? What? Very little gear talk. That's also your favorite. Very little <laughs> gear talk. Yeah, you guys like, are, you know. I don't want to talk to other musicians yeah. about guitars that we use. Sure. I don't want to talk technical details because it can often come to that. Actually, you know why he is really in your pocket is because he is a storyteller and you love that. So you do also love the stories and you love to tell me stories. I do. And so, and you know, I think that that's actually really sweet. It's like you guys have that in common is that you like swapping the tails and you eat it up and he probably does too, really enjoys it. And um, I listened to the full episode. I had my hair done this morning and uh, it was kind of funny Flash because back. actually you listened to the full old the episode. Full old episode. Yeah, this was, this was raw impressions eight. Yes. Eight. So, and I knew we were going to discuss the, the Dave meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, Oh, I'm going to go back and listen to that episode. And it was perfect. Cause my drive was a half an hour to my hair salon and the episode was like 24 minutes so I pulled in like right on time I got to listen to the full episode see how we've done that for you guys you know just a half an hour drive it hits that <laughs> sweet spot but um everything is a half an hour away everything is a half an hour away so there you go and it was funny listening to that episode and just hearing us, ourselves like over a year ago, like baby podcasters, you know, out in the wild it talking. Was it was a baby pod. <laughs> little bitty baby pod. It was a little baby pod. <sighs> and, but it did sort of make me just laugh, you know, like listening to us talk about, I, I literally saved Dave Grohl's name like 50 times in the episode, which is, I think, funny. <laughs> And uh, also mentioning, I forgot about the Eddie Vedder part where I'm like, and then not only that, you said you also wanted to meet Eddie Vedder, and that made me laugh because now we had now you got to meet Eddie Vedder. We've we've done Dave. I don't know now Eddie because uh, there is a beautiful that felt very personal when you did share those things. I I did feel a little bit like ooh, oh, exposed. I almost, yeah, I almost felt like a kid, like in your parents are talking I'm about sorry. some shit you did when you and were and I talked year old. about you like in a third person. Well, Lou says that he wants to meet Dave Grohl. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> bit like if your if your mom just fucking sells you out to oh, a, to a, a room. So are you mad at me? No, of course not. Yeah, that was good for me, and I'll tell you what. I think just the fact that we went through that episode, and you you allowed it to air, and I allowed it to air because I could have. I could have just like I could have just squashed that bug. I yeah. could have been like, nope, nobody's going to find out about my secret. My 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 secret that is yeah. that that I want to I want to meet Eddie Vedder, and I want to discuss baritone ukuleles. Mm. And I you do. wanted to just meet Dave Grohl and just Dave. I'm hang, like, just hang. I just wanted yeah. I just wanted to be. I wanted to hear the stories. Yeah. And he seems for coming from that 
that time period, we come from the same kind of time period. It was a very intense period Mm -hmm. when your bands were coming up and Nirvana becoming extremely popular was a very intense experience. Mm -hmm. And they did it from a, a, a very distinctly not like traditional rock and roll. They weren't like rock stars, Mm -hmm. you know, but they became rock stars. Yeah. And Dave Grohl became a rock star, but he is, he's embraced that role in a way that I find really tasteful. Wait, what's this? Is this going to be another blip from the episode? (laughs) (laughs) No, this is, this is here to remind you. Uh, To read my poetry. Yeah. You should really. Okay read this these poems okay okay good good reminder well so let me let me so can i set this up a little bit yeah please do we we set it up already in the last uh tiny tunes tuesday but if you weren't there for that one and you're yeah so we had an episode another episode a flash i Mm -hmm. you know back to uh I don't know. God, it was 20 episodes ago, perhaps. We did this... Uh, I think it was last summer, yeah. Yeah, we did... Uh, we read from our journals. Mm-hmm. And I read from journals of not-so-distant past, maybe like 10, 15 years ago. Right. Mostly like dreams. I was reading, like... Uh, I used to write down my dreams, and so it was a dream that I... Very odd dream that I had. And then yep. you... You had these lovely little poems, these really super sweet poems that you had written, you know, when you were uh, eight or nine. Yeah really very, young. very sweet you know big loopy handwriting mm-hmm. it was all just such a sweet little glimpse into mm-hmm. a sweet little girl you know so nice and uh but there were some poems that we both had recalled seeing somewhere mm-hmm. and they were from your high school years <laughs> and unfortunately we could we couldn't find them yeah However, i didn't know where they were for that episode and this recent upheaval that we've gone through in the house which is the, our attic, the or, ad- I'm sorry, our roof was redone. Our roof was redone, and in the process of that, it rained debris all over the attic. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we, ha- I had to go through the process of cleaning out the attic. Because that's where we store all our shit. Yep. Mm-hmm. The, the attic needed to be completely cleaned, um, and it was. Yes. And in the process, process of that, I stumbled upon these two. Oh. You, well, you stumbled upon a David Sedaris book. Yep. And then you opened it or something? Well, no, or those were sticking out sticking of the book. Out. I was like, oh. what's sticking out of this book? <laughs> and I'm like, there they are. Bam. And they're the two pieces and... of paper that Adele is holding in her hands now. And um, mm-hmm. I'm excited. This is some of the, this is some of the this most... This is less sweet. This is older Adele going through some things. Hmm? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah yep. take, 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 take it, it away. away. Take oh, it away. okay. Well, <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> that I think they're both from high school. I know that I know that the first one I'll read is definitely from high school. It's from my senior year. Uh, I will not name the teacher, but I know the teacher it was about. And I had very strong feelings about her. Um, and don't hold back. Yesterday, you, you did a little practice read, and it was really... Okay, so just read it with the same. I, I, I'm sorry, I don't. No press. No press. Okay, you do, it, you do it how you feel it today. I would just like sorry. to say there's no like title on this or anything. I don't know if I just wrote this to just get it off my chest and then hide it, and but it's printed, which is wild. So like I obviously printed it, and mm. anyway, it was you typed it out. Yeah, I typed it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> God. Okay. Okay, guys. Hmm. And I'll start now. Okay. She wouldn't even listen to me. Fucking bitch. She teaches my creative writing class. Fucking bitch. She wouldn't know imagination if she sniffed it up her nose. She tells me my paper needs a title. I grit my teeth and disagree. Fucking bitch! Go piss up a tree. She's a tight ass with a brain full of lead. I feel as if I could kill her. She slashes my papers with her red fucking pen, telling me to fix the errors that are only in her head, never considering I might have wanted my writing that particular way. She's just a fucking bitch! What can I say? 
I will uh, also <laughs> thank you. Thank Lots you very much, everyone. Audience <laughs> 1972. <laughs> And for if this ever gets up on YouTube, I'll put that. Can you see that in the do to do? And maybe I'll take a picture of that. Um, <clears throat> anywho, and then so that, yeah, wow. <sighs> Had some feelings. Um, so that was your creative writing teacher. Mm hmm. Yeah. How can you criticize creative writing? She was very critical of my creative writing. And I wasn't a fan of, and I, I think I might have even failed the class or got like a D or an F. I don't know. It was, it was not good. But <laughs> I, yeah. So, okay, here's another one. This one's a handwritten one. Um, <laughs> Let's, can you can we see the handwriting real quick? I, I, uh, I'll put this one up to the, to the screen again real quick. I don't know if you can see it. Okay. But, um, okay. Oh. All right. All right. This one is also quite terse, quite strong. Uh, this is how I felt in school, high school. Okay, here we go. Again, no title. I don't know if this was just me just riffing my little poet self. Okay. This school is manure, squirting from a horse's ass. Crumbling system. These kids are trapped in their own torture. You are not the only one trapped. It's a shithole. Shithole. Obsessive compulsive. I want to eat you alive. So, now that so one, everyone. <laughs> that one is like a hardcore tune. Yeah. Man. I have to say, I'm really proud of myself for some of my descriptive language in this one. I, I mean, the school is manure squirting from a horse's ass. <laughs> just, you, um, you feel that line. Wow. You feel it. You feel it. You I mean, it. you're there. You're really feeling it. You can almost smell it. Mm, mm hmm. So, yeah, it. Uh, this is high school. That's high school for some of us. Whew. My my high school poem was a, a song called Training Ground. <laughs> yeah, that you guys did with Deep Wound, right? Yeah. I'm never going to college. My life won't follow a plan. I've had enough of their knowledge and this game that I can't win. Four years of high school, judgment through the grades, a twisted idea of progress, a waste of too many days. Mm. It's all a training ground where you learn to be afraid. You learn your insignificance. You shut your mouth and pay. Only the exceptional, they will benefit. They learn to make a profit from other people's shit. Well, we weren't that... Uh, I know, I feel like we... I know, we were like kindred we like spirits we, we, there we, in high school. Wow. I know. Maybe, mm. maybe we really are mm. soulmates. Oh. You know? Gosh, maybe. I mean, I've always, that, that term soulmate, soulmate is a little bandied about, about quite a bit. bit. Mm. But, but you know, you knowing know you wrote, wrote that in high school, school. <laughs> that means a lot to me. It, it makes me feel closer, closer to you. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed um, uh, my poems. Oh, oh my gosh, the timing. This episode is like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah. And Dave, uh, I don't know. I feel, I think, think hanging out, out with Dave Grohl, uh -huh. it's put a little spring in my step. Oh, yes. I'm not going to lie. Yes. I don't, you know, I, I may never hang out with Dave again. Let's not go that far, honey. He's, oh, welcome, in, he's welcome in Greenfield, Massachusetts anytime. No pressure. No Dave. pressure, Dave. No pressure. No. <laughs> Man, thank you so much for listening to another episode of Raw Impressions. We hope you too, enjoyed yeah. it. If you did, feel free to tell us all about it. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, four track man psyched too. You hear that? I know. We're all a little oh. peppier today. <laughs> Raw Impressions. <laughs>